just a few seasons ago, the Phoenix Suns were in the NBA Finals and had lost to the Milwaukee Bucks in six games in what was one of the better finals in recent history. Things looked extremely bright with guys like Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton all being relatively young and having a veteran star point guard in Chris Paul. They decided to run it back and it proved to be worth it as they had their best season in a very long time, winning 64 games good enough for first in the Western Conference in 2022. But we all know how that ended. They got embarrassed by the Dallas Mavericks in that infamous second round series upset. Obviously, everybody knows about Game 7 in that series at Phoenix where Luka completely destroyed that Suns team and they never quite bounced back as we went into 2023 and they dealt with some injuries. The team wasn't as good. And fast forward to the deadline where they blew up the puzzle pieces of that core to bring in one of the greatest players of all time and Kevin Durant, which in a general standpoint, sounded like a great idea but what if i told you that that was the start of being stuck in the middle for matt ishbia and the phoenix suns they would go on to have depth issues in the second round and lose in a fun series to the denver nuggets but then they committed even harder to a bad formula for this modern era by trading for bradley beal and taking on that horrific contract from the washington wizards basically bailing the Wizards out of that deal. It proved to be pretty bad, and we're in the early stages of this going down. Like, it hasn't even been that long since it happened. But you can already tell where this is going. The Phoenix Suns went on this past season, pretty much was similar to 2023. Bradley Beal dealt with injuries. The Suns lacked real point guard play, and they lacked a bench once again which resulted in a similar fate in their first round loss to Minnesota in a sweeping fashion where, once again, they got embarrassed in their home building. And as for the Suns this past season in general, like I said, a lot of similar issues to the 2023 team, or at least you could say the Kevin Durant version of that team. Not saying it's KD's fault, but I'm just using him as a reference for that specific time frame since then. They ranked last in bench points per game this past season, and it makes sense when you factor in all they really could do in the previous offseason was bring in guys on cheap deals. Now, they did have some W's in this time frame. For example, the signing of Grayson Allen, who was, I think, the best shooter in the league last season percentage-wise. I guess you can give him that. That was a great deal. They signed him to an extension. That's a really good role player to have. But their current status can't help but make me think that this team is just stuck with no real future currently. They have two stars who are on the older side of things with Durant and Beal to put with Booker who's in the middle of his prime. And that's no shade because Kevin Durant is still great, one of the best players in the game. But you can't fully bank on him to play 70 plus games every season, despite him playing 75 just last season. And in Beal's case, he has a lot of those like nagging injuries that never really go away. And in result, it causes missed time every year. Like, there hasn't been a year in recent history where he's played 75, 76 games. He always misses significant time, it feels like. So this offseason, the Suns knew what they had to do. But once again, you're moving around in a tight space because there's not a lot of money to really use. But I won't lie. One thing I will say is I really liked the signing of Tyus Jones. Granted, it was for a steal of a contract because Tyus Jones is not worth that money. It's not a blockbuster kind of deal, but I did like that deal a lot. I did say earlier that they needed some guard play, and Jones is as solid as they come when it comes to being a floor general. They also did add Monte Morris, which really boosts their point guard rotation as a whole, and it was needed considering how bad they were, and it showed in certain things like, for example... One stat that proved just how weird and kind of bad this team was for a team that had the talent that they had, they sucked in the fourth quarter. They were like easily the worst fourth quarter team in the league. And you must be thinking, how could you be a bad fourth quarter team with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant on the floor? That's one of the reasons. So for them to upgrade in that position was kind of a big deal, but... As for the rest of the offseason, they made some little moves here and there. They signed Mason Plumlee as a backup big. 
but not really anything that like changed my stance on them as a team for real. I still think this Suns roster is just stuck with no real title hopes. And it's no shade to the Suns. It's just the reality of the situation, I think. You look at the Nets. They took those picks in the Kevin Durant trade. They used the draft capital wisely. They got their 2025 pick back from Houston. And here the Suns are. They're just really praying things break their way. Like, they would really need for things to go a certain way for them to really make a run. Like, they need injuries to happen. Not saying you want to wish for injuries, but they would need something like that to happen, in my opinion, for this team to really push for a title. The Suns really aren't, like, great at anything. And I know it sounds like I'm just slandering them here, but I really just think they're, like, an at-best mediocre defensive team. It showed they were in the middle of the pack in defensive rating and opponent points per game. And on the offensive side of the floor, I think they don't really get enough threes up. You got Booker, who's a guy who he loves to work in a mid-range game. He can shoot the three, but he loves to work as a three-level scorer. Durant, heavily a mid-range guy, can shoot the three, but once again, heavily a mid-range guy. And I think with Beal, it's kind of just like the same. They have Beal, and he's a guy where he's not going to like sacrifice his shot diet that he's been taking for years to take more threes and become like this catch-and-shoot role player because... Somebody has to sacrifice out of three, and it obviously has to be Beal. But I didn't see much to think that like Beal was sacrificing. If anything, you're actually limiting what he does best because he doesn't have the ball in his hands as much as he used to in Washington, and that's for the better because Kevin Durant and Bradley, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are better players. But in the reality of things, when I look at this Suns team, they just remind me of like a poor man's version of the 2021 Brooklyn Nets that was really good but the difference is that team was like actually dangerous and they didn't have to deal with the tough Western Conference I think if they had just kept that previous core of all that depth that they had and like added Tyus Jones to that to swap out for an aging Chris Paul it would have still had them as a legit threat in the West like all those guys would be in their prime right now that team would like flow and just fit way better and naturally then I think the route they chose here by going all in on a quote-unquote big three, when in reality, it's like, these things don't work anymore. And this isn't like a strong enough big three to win you a title. This isn't like the Warriors in 2017 where they all fit and Clay sacrificed and he was fine with it and Curry sacrificed and everybody kind of did their part. This doesn't click. This is like a bad version of the Nets with Kyrie and Harden. Now, do I think the Suns will be a bad basketball team? Like, are they going to be, like, a lottery kind of team? No. I still think they'll be in, like, the 47 to 49 wins range. But in the grand scheme of things, I don't believe that they have enough to actually win a title or be taken, like, super serious. And I think eventually the questions about the Suns' future will be showing up quick, potentially as soon as this season. And I wonder what will happen, because if it doesn't go the way they expect... I think only time will tell what's going to happen with this current Phoenix Suns core and what that might lead to for the near future. Anyways, that's going to do it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been a checkup, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.